Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. And I want to preach a little bit on the, the third day blessing. The third day blessing. Earlier this morning before I came to worship, I began to just praise the Lord. I said, Lord, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Then I said, Lord, I want to get into the all part. The all part, all that's within me, I wanted to bless the Lord. Then I said, Lord, what's in me that, that's blessable, that can bless you. And all my soul, all that's within me, Lord, I want to praise you. I want to thank you, God, your goodness, your mercy, your long-suffering. Good to see you back this morning, Sharon. Praise God. I thought of Isaiah. When he said this, he began to bless the Lord. And then it said, the angels were crying, holy, holy, holy. And Isaiah looked around, and it said, talk about the Lord, said his train filled the temple. His train filled the temple when the seraphim began to cry, Holy, holy, holy. That's like fire that would touch down. But when his train filled the temple, must have been a beautiful sight. History says that when warriors would go out in battle, they would name that battle. And if they won that battle when they come back, they, they wore a skirt. The warriors wore a skirt. And when they would come back from battle, if they had won that battle, you know what they would do? They would take a piece of some kind of tapestry or cloth and sew it all to the length of that skirt. And then they would embroider the name of that battle on that skirt. And every battle they won, it was added to the length of that skirt. And I thought, Lord, the last battle you won was at Calvary. Fill the temple with the glory of God. Every battle we win, it's, it's recorded. The name of your battle, everything. And your skirt got longer. It was so long that it covered the whole temple. The glory of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Again, I want to preach a little bit today by the grace of God on the blessing of the third day. And the reason being this, Tuesday night we were here praying, and those that were could be here, I'm, Leroy's got a testimony. I thought he was about to get the Holy Ghost. But that third day, and I explained to them why we have prayer meeting on Tuesday. It's the third day. You go from the book of Genesis throughout the Word of God, and on the third day, the unusual happened. If we can get a revelation of the power of the third day, I think that we could flow in it so much easier. But that third day blessing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. Father, take these words and do with them what I can't do. Lord, let them penetrate the principalities of the air. Lord, let them find a path, Lord, into the dwelling of millions of people, of the multitudes. And Lord, let the portal of Ohio into the heavens be open in Jesus' name. The blessing of the third day. I believe that we are in the third day, spiritually speaking. And I will tell you why. Now, that third day blessing, this is what the Lord impressed me with, was the resurrection power and rapture power. The third day blessing. And Paul said it like this. I'm in the King James Version of the Bible. Other people have 
different versions, but this is what I've got, and I like it good. Paul speaking about Jesus. He was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And, of course, my mind went back to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On that resurrection morning, the Word said, All the dead in Christ shall rise. The power and demonstration of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But in studying this, my mind went back to the day that the Word said, as Paul said, he was buried, but he rose again on the third day according to the Scripture. When he got up on that rest, he had already been to the cross, you know that, crucified, gave his life, paid the price, the blood was shed. But that was not all of it. That was just the beginning of it. It did not stop at the cross. Amen? Because on that third morning, when he got up, it said that he arose, and, and those that saw him acknowledged that they saw him go away. And the word said that he was seen of many by many infallible proofs for 40 days after the resurrection. So when he left the grave, he didn't go back to the cross. He ascended to the Father's room, the Father's house. I've done some studying on the Father's house this week, and it gave an illustration. It said that Jesus, being the rabbi or the teacher that he was, he used natural illustrations to claim a spiritual side of it. And it said that back then, a lot of the dwelling places was like an open area, and then on each side of that, all four corners or whatever, there were other rooms that were added on, one by one by one by one by one. And as the family grew, another room was added. And the word said that they were, were referred to as mansions because they were grand. It was a dwelling place. It was a house. It was a literal uh, dwelling place. But it was called a mansion because of its grandeur, its beauty, its price. So I want you to know that when Jesus got up that morning, he didn't go back to the cross. He went to the Father's house where he said, I'll prepare for you a place in my Father's house where there are many mansions. I'm glad that the Lord has me a prepared place. How many of you, you are glad that he's got you a prepared place? Listen, a room, a place, my God. And here, Paul speaking that when he was buried, said he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. So we read here about the resurrection power of the living God. Listen, when I leave here, when, when I'm no longer here behind this pulpit preaching, if I go by way of the grave, there's going to be a third day for me. There's going to be a getting up morning. Amen. I said there's going to be a getting up morning. There's a song on that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. On that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. There's going to be a morning. My God, someone said, what are you going to do on Christmas, Christmas Day? I said, thought to myself, I think I'm going to go to the cemetery and sit there and, and talk to Raymond. <laughs> and I may just say, Raymond, there's going to be a better day, honey. He's already up there. So all I can talk to is the shell that was left behind. Not much of it. But you know what? I, I just may do that. I believe that we're in the third day. That third day blessing depends upon our determination with a made-up mind. How many of you, you've got a made-up mind? My God, that none of these things is going to stop you. Paul said it like this. He said, none of these things is going to move me because I've got a vision. He said, I see the end of this thing. He said, there's a crown that's laid up for me, and not just for me only, but for you also. My God, church, oh, sweet people of God, whoo, precious people of God, there's a great getting up morning. 
if we'll be faithful. But that third day blessing, my God, it's going to be resurrection power. My God, on that resurrection morning, all the dead in Christ shall rise. And like I went to the house this morning, I said, God, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And then I said, God, help me to get into that all realm. God, help me to get into where I'm in it with all of it. Everything that's in me, God, help me to get all the way there. Everything within me, God, let it bless the Lord. Woo! That resurrection power, that resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise. We don't know what people in the grave are feeling today. We don't know how close this thing is to the coming of the Lord. We don't know how close it is. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But Paul's speaking here. This, he spoke about the resurrection of Christ to the brethren. He said, Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which was also which also you have received, and wherein you stand. My God, he was instructing the people, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the things of God. My God, get into that where you can say, and everything within me, praise the Lord. All this, I said, God, help me to get into that all realm. You know, sometimes all of us is not in it. Some of us, sometimes everything we are is not really in it. But if we can get to the place that we can truly say, Lord, all that's within me, let it praise the Lord. You know, sometimes we have what we call a bad hair day. <laughs> praise God. But whatever that is, help me to praise you anyway. Thank you, God. One day I was preparing to come to church, and Amber was little, my, great, my granddaughter. And uh, I would comb my hair, and then I'd spray my hair. The more I sprayed, the worse it looked. And at some point, I mean, it got to where I mean, it was hanging down. Sadly, let your bangs hang down. And the more it slumped, the more upset I got. And I had to come to church and preach. Have you ever, have ever had to come to church to sing and you didn't feel like it? Your hair didn't look good? Had a run in your hose? You just didn't feel good. But you knew you had to sing. Well, the more I sprayed my hair, the worse it looked. But come to find out, she had poured out all the hairspray and refilled the bottle with water. So uh, the more I tried, the worse it got. You know, sometimes it's like that. And I, I got to thinking more about my hair than I was preaching. If you're not careful, you'll get to thinking more about how you look than trying to win souls. You'll, you'll, you'll forget all about, listen, pressing through to touch the hem of his garment if you think you've got to run in your hose. You men don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry how you parted your hair today. Our brother Donnie, how he combed his mustache, his whiskers, you know. But us women, we're different. Woo! But Lord, help me to get all of me in there to praise you and to bless you. That third day blessing. I believe just as sure as I'm standing here looking at you in that light. That we're in that third day where every service is going to count. Every time we've lifted these hands is going to count. Every time we've done anything for the Lord is going to count. I'm pressing for that third day resurrection power of blessing. And again, I wish you'd learn that song on that resurrection morning. All the dead in Christ shall rise. We'll have a new body. Woo! None of you here are as old as I am. So I can talk about how I'm going to enjoy my new body. There's just so much Pond's cold cream you can dab on. Then you switch to something else. You know? But you, you, can't, you can't undo what God is doing. And if you live long enough, you will have wrinkles. You will have sags. You will have drags. But eventually, listen, it won't matter how much you, you, you paint and powder you put on. It's going to sag. It's going to, be a, it's going to be a painted wrinkle. It's going to be a greased wrinkle. I'm telling you it is. I'm talking from experience. And you'll look in the mirror, and, and you know you look bad. But you know you've got to, you know, do what you can for Jesus and touch some souls today. Amen. Talking about that third day blessing. The best thing Jesus ever did for us was not just die, 
but that getting up morning. Yeah. Huh? Oh, when he took that blood, <laughs> and he anointed the mercy seat. You see, Hebrews 4, 16 said, come boldly before the mercy seat to get some help in the day of trouble. My God, in the day of need, Hebrews 4.16 wouldn't be there had he got, not got up on resurrection morning and ascended into the heavenlies. My God, in the throne room of God, and there there's a, a, there's a tabernacle, and he put some of that blood. My God, he's got some of that manna up there. Every now and then I said, God, let me have some of that hidden manna. Lord, that's in the throne room of God. There's a place in God that we can press our way into, that we can shout our way into. My God, that we can that we can crawl if we have to, but we can get there. My God, that third day blessing, resurrection morning again, when all the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah. Let's go to John. Thank you, God. My God is so good. Praise God. John chapter, well, I feel good here. I don't know what y'all are feeling. I think I've got my... Now, Luke 24, 50 is where I'm headed. Luke 24, 50. How many is enjoying what God's doing this morning? Ha! Praise God. And behold, but what I'm really looking for is where? It said on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. The second, third day blessing is the marriage supper of the Lamb. The two third day blessings that God impressed me with was the resurrection blessing of the third day. But I believe the last one will be the third day blessing will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. We were here Tuesday night, and I told the girls and those that were here, I said, I believe the Lord has just given me my message from Sunday morning, and I wrote it down, the third day blessing. But during that time, we began to play some, some Jewish music. And I mean, it just, it just, it, trying, it, just uh, it, it just turned the whole atmosphere around. We got to praising and worshiping God, and the Lord got to speaking about the bride making herself ready. How many of you believe that the bride, the church, is making herself ready? But it said that the third blessing, the third day blessing that I'm going to bring out now is the blessing of the rapture of the church. Because it said on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the people were gathered there. And I counted Tuesday night. And I told him, I said, there's six here. But what I didn't tell him in deep detail, my mind went to the marriage of Cana of Galilee. And it said there were six water pots there. And those six water pots was about to get a miracle, my God, a change like they'd never seen before the people there. But at that marriage, they ran out of wine. Did you know there's going to be a time that we're going to have to get some new wine in this thing? We're going to have to get a fresh move of the Holy Ghost in our day. We're going to have to get a fresh revelation of who Jesus really is. But it said they ran out of wine. They would gathered for a wedding. The wedding party was uh, going on, but they ran out. Have you ever felt like you've run out of just a shout? You've run out of a praise. You've run out of another prayer to pray. A lot of times I thank God, I don't know another word to preach. I'm like that widow woman that had that barrel of meal, and she was down to one last handful, and that was going to be it. I feel like I'm preached out. You may not can relate to that, but there's times I feel like, Lord, I've got nothing else to give. Reach for it, and it's not there. My God. Have you ever reached for it and it wasn't there? You prayed it wasn't there. You spoke the word and it wasn't there. What's going on? The meal barrel has got to be refilled. The oil cruise has got to be refilled. The oil, the, the wine had run out. 
and it's either new wine or nothing. Could it be that we're in a day now? It's going to be either the new wine or nothing. My God, for the wedding party, Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to him, to Jesus, and said they're out of wine. Jesus wasn't disturbed. But he told him what to do. Go down there and fill up every water pot with water. Take it to the governor and watch what happens. The water pots, I feel like I'm one of those water pots today that can hold the change. Do you feel like that you can hold the change that God wants to make? Fill up these vessels with that fresh praise. The water pot, so to speak, fill it up. Then bring it to the governor. And by the time they filled it up, there were six of them. By the time they filled it up and got to the governor, a miracle had taken place. And it said when they tasted of it, they, they didn't understand that there had been a miracle. That I believe the last third day blessing will be the blessing of the rapture of the church. Two blessings here. Resurrection morning and the rapture of the church. I call it the third day blessings that we read about in the word of God. And I believe that we're in the third day because everything, you go through to the book of Genesis, major things that happened always happened on the third day. And our third day is on Tuesday. I wouldn't doubt that Jesus doesn't come back on a Tuesday. I don't know. But I just know the pattern, the set pattern on the third day is when God turned things around. And if we comprehend how the pattern of God operates, I believe that that would encourage us, my God, to reach as high as we can. You know, if I reach as high as I can, I say, God, take it from here. If I bow as low as I know how to bow, then I can say, Lord, you take it from here. And if I lift my voice as loud as I know how to lift it, I can say, Lord, you take it from here. But God, don't leave me without giving me a blessing. I want that third day blessing, my God. I want to feel that resurrection power. My God, it said, and God moved upon the face of the waters, and he began to divide things. Did you know that, that we have the power of the resurrection if we will just press into it. My God, be loyal to the things of God. Exalt that name of Jesus. It said for, for we are we're moved by the power. Whew, that power of resurrection. The church world is going to have to move in a power like we have never moved before. You spoke earlier. The church world has got to rise up. We can't be passive, and we've got to understand where we're at. My God, one day it's going to be resurrection morning. I won't be here standing. You won't be sitting here. My God, it's going to be now or never. It's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be facing it time. Help us, God. When we look back and we say, God, I thank you, God, that I tried one more time. God, I thank you that I made it one more time. I thank you, God, that I didn't give up. I thank you, God, that I didn't cry. My God, I didn't let the devil hinder me and do me in. I'm going to praise you, God. Lord, I may not be doing what I want to do, but, God, I'm going to praise you for what I can do. That third day resurrection power. My God mixed it with the marriage supper. Woo! Uh, well, hallelujah. Mixed with that rapture power. I said mixed with that rapture power. Woo, there's going to be a rapture anointing. Enoch walked among people. And the Lord spoke a few weeks back. He said, Enoch is among you. Enoch is a type of the, the, the rapture anointing of God. I want to be raptured, don't you? I want to be taken out of this place, my God, with everything. Listen, when the last shout, that last trump, 
And Tuesday night, the Lord got to speaking about that, that silver trumpet that's being blown to draw his people and gather them together from all corners of the earth. There's going to be a gathering of the saints of God. What a gathering that will be. When all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Oh, son, oh, I'll have a new life. On that great resurrection morning, on that great getting up morning, my God, help me, Lord. Help me, God, to make it. I see your son. I see your son. I'm blessing him. I saw. I said, I see your household. There's going to be a turnaround. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy. That third day blessing. God's going to restore. He's going to restore. I said, Debbie, God's going to restore some stuff to you, sweetheart. Ebrahim Shakai. There's going to be an Abraham blessing overtake you. Thank you, Jesus. I said, I said, I said, Oh, help me worship. Hallelujah. That third day blessing. The bride making herself ready, getting ready for that third day blessing. The marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, just love Jesus with us. Thank you, Jesus. There's a song, Jesus getting us ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? Jesus getting us ready for that great day, the day of the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Resurrection blessing, rapture blessing. When Jesus got up from that grave, honey, when Jesus got up, when he left the cross, he didn't go back. He kept going. Amen. He didn't return. He kept going. Praise God. How many of you? Praise God. You understand. Hallelujah. He didn't go back to the grave. He kept going. The word said he ascended. That meant he kept going. He didn't go back. Would you stand? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. That third day blessing. God, let your whew, quickening power. The word said that he would also quicken us. We'd be quickened. That mean made, means be made alive. I love to feel the quickening power of the Holy Ghost. The quickening. Something that gets a hold of you and it wasn't you. It wasn't choreographed. You know what has almost destroyed the church world? is choreographing everything. They've choreographed God come out of the picture. But when the Holy Ghost comes in and begins to choreograph, it's not <laughs> something you practice 90 days on. <laughs> Got the right moves, you know. Yeah, Got to have a new outfit to shimmy in. Yeah, but God's getting the people ready. Oh, Sweet you. people. But again, to thank God for that third day blessing. Yeah. It's real. Would you just come and stand before the Lord and let, let's just praise God. Sandy, if you would, put on that Jewish music again. Thank you, Jesus. And if there's...